first, let me say thank you for giving that word because thank you for your obedience. You know, it talks about you know, <laughs> it talks about um, God blesses us by, you know, our obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, also to, you know, confirmation, you know, and, and when there's a season of, of, of God is speaking, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, um, you know, continue doing that in, in what you're doing. But I also want to share something with you. See, God taught me about the GPS. See, when we put the GPS on, no matter which direction it goes in, it will always recalculate. But see, you were you were excellent in what you were saying, you know, um, and also, you know, let people know that sometimes they like to they like to say that the devil is busy, you know, and really. It's not even him, because if God delayed that. This is what they'll think. Now, you are correct, but this is what they'll think. Just got to be the devil, the devil and his GPS, you know what I'm saying? Or people give people uh, give the devil too much credit. You know, like people, I, somebody was was waking up and they were like, oh, I just didn't feel like getting up this morning. The devil, the devil was on me, you know what I'm saying? Have me not get up. And I'm thinking to myself like, was it the devil or was it your flesh? You ever, you ever wake up and not want to go to work? You ever wake up and not want to make that drive? So watch this. Let's get to the GPS because see, God's GPS, ooh, God's positioning system is not like the regular GPS because God likes to take different routes. See the GPS, see a regular GPS always takes the shortest route, but, but God was teaching me something because it took me 14 years to get my degree, graduated in 99. Had the superlative, you know, most likely to succeed. Um, and it took me 14 years to get my degree. Yeah, I made some 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 uh, decisions and choices and things like that. Um, and it was a learning process. But then God told me to go back and get my degree. Let's get to the word. Exodus 13 and NLT. I like this version. When Pharaoh finally let the people go, God did not lead them along the main road that runs through Philistine territory, even though that was the shortest route to the promised land. God said, if the people are faced with a battle, they might change their minds and return to Egypt. Verse 18. So God led them in a roundabout way through the wilderness toward the Red Sea. Thus, the Israelites left Egypt like an army ready for battle. But hold up, God, because you told me to study your word and your word says in Second Chronicles 20 and 15 that the battle is not yours. It's the Lord's. So why would you prepare me for battle? Unless it's the battle of the mind. See, when God led them away, see, Faith is giving you enough information to get you to where you need to be. See, Moses told them, be, you know, saying like he said, you know, be still that, that God was going to fight for you. You know what I'm saying? No, the Lord is going to fight for you. They didn't know how God was going to fight, you know. And when we look at fight, we look at, OK, was he physically going to send an angel and fight for us? So God never told them. God directed them to the towards the Red Sea. God never told them, listen, when you get to the Red Sea, I'm going to part it. Because, see, if God would have told them that, it wouldn't have been faith. Because we know that without faith, it's impossible to please God, right? And he that seeks him, you know, if you if you diligently seeks him, God is a rewarder, you know. So when they went, they had to have faith because they didn't know what God was going to do. But God knew that he was going to part the Red Sea. So that's where we got to get ready. The battle of the mind. That's why we got to armor up. That's why we got to, you know, use the scriptures and you understand that the armor and everything like that. Ephesians 6. I know you understand that. So watch this. It was the battle of the mind. And so a lot of people are not prepared for the battle of the mind. A lot of people are not armored up like the superhero Clark Kent. See, when you fight Clark Kent, no matter what, you're going to fight Superman because every time you Come and attack him, even if he has, even if he's Clark Kent, what does he do? He takes his, he takes his uh, work clothes off and he goes to work. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. So 
that's what that's what God does. You know, so that's what I just wanted to come and, and say to you that, you know, what I'm saying when you, you know, what I'm saying like teach them that, you know, God's GPS is not like the regular GPS, even though there are some characteristics that are the same, because if you go in the same direction, if you go in a, a, a different direction than what it is, it will always recalculate. And so that's what we got to do. And we got to say, think it not strange of the fiery trials that come to try you as though some strange things were happening. Because, like I said, sometimes we do give the devil too much credit. When, if if God is leading them, watch this. Like he did. Remember, it says that God put an evil spirit in Pharaoh. You know, well, God, God hardened his heart. See, people don't talk about that. It was not the devil. We know the devil did what, did, what he did with Judas. But God hardened Pharaoh's heart because Pharaoh would not listen. So God is hardening some of our enemies because they won't listen to God. See, God ain't playing. See, <laughs> that's why I stay armored up. That's why I ain't even worried about it. That's why I don't get the devil credit. Because see, imagine, see, we know the devil is prideful. So you know how he is when he can't get credit. <laughs> People be like, oh, but I did this. Nope. And think about it. Even though he bothered Job. Job never gave him credit. He said, yet though he slay me, I will trust thee. We know he was talking about God. Never gave him credit. And people give the devil too much credit because I've even heard Marvin Sapp in his song say, you know, the devil peeked into your future. Nah, bruh. Because watch this. If the devil peeked into the future, right? When God said that he can bother his sovereign, the devil would have been like, you mean to tell me you're going to let me bother Job? And I'm going to tear everything down. I'm going to bother his family. I'm going to bother his skin. I'm going to bother his cattle. Everything. And then you're going to give him double? So you're going gonna, gonna to tear everything down and then you're going to rebuild it twice. And that's going to be one of the, the premier stories in your Bible. Nah, God, you good. I'm going to leave Job alone. See, the reason why God allowed the devil to bother him because God knew the outcome. So who played who? <laughs> so watch this. God knew the outcome of what it was. So let's get to it. We understand that we ain't got to give the devil credit because it says what? Resist the devil and he shall flee. And then right after that, it says draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. Because a lot of times if the devil is bothering us, we are weak. So I guess I'll just use this and just put this out there for the video today um, about God's GPS. Because a lot of people don't understand that. And they'd they be like, you know what? It took me this long to get this. And so many people. And I'm just like, listen, it took me 14 years to get my degree. 99 to 2013. The devil can't use that. Nobody can use that. Oh, it took you 14 years. Okay. I got my degree. I know where God has taken me. Like you said, delay does not mean denial. And God likes to hold us up, you know, and was it one of the scriptures that I love? Love this scripture. Because see, people don't understand. God didn't tell us to read the word. He told us to study it. And so a lot of people, we just read the word and then we go try to fight the devil. We go try to fight life and then. We don't know what to do, but we know when we study, we are a lot better. Second Peter three and nine. The Lord isn't really being slow about his promise. As some people think, no, he is being patient for your sake. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. See, God gives people grace and mercy to, to, to do right. By his people, because what did it say? Touch not my anointed hmm? and do my prophets no harm. Because we know not everybody's a prophet, but if they're anointed, don't don't do that. And see, the Bible talks about not putting a stumbling block in front of these little ones. And people think, oh, well, that's just children. Maybe that's why he called us children of God, because you can be 80 years old. And still be a child of God. So people better stop playing around. Because one thing I know is God loves his people. God will deal with those that are out of order. And even though Saul was out of order, David was not permitted to touch him. God said, do not touch him. 
And God even put Saul, his enemy at that time, he was a temporary enemy because we know enemies in the dictionary mean anybody causing hatred. God put Saul in front of David and David could have. And if you read it, if you study it, it actually says that when Saul was in the cave using the bathroom, <laughs> David was right there. And David men was like, yo, let's get this dude, bruh. Yo, this man's right here. Listen, this dude trying to kill you. Let's kill him before you listen. Listen, and, and David has some ride or die people. Cause listen, they left the king to roll with David. Think about it. They left the king to roll with David. They like, yo, David, let's take this man's out right now, bruh. All your problems is gone. And that's what we got to be careful because even though they would ride or die, their advice, they were unqualified to give advice, even though they meant well, because see, they were trying to protect David. They would have died for David. They would have killed anybody and they was going to kill the king. And they would have said, listen, and David said, nah, bro. He said, listen, I can't do that because God told me no. But they was like, yo, and I can imagine them having a conversation. Yo, David, bro, this dude is this dude is out of order, bro. You, you, you said that. You, you already told us how he out of order when, when we be sitting and resting. Like we running. And now we got a chance to kill this dude. And listen, and then come out with his head. And listen, it's over and done with. Listen, you're you going to be king anyway. You said that. He like, nah, man. God told me to chill, man. God got this. They like, man. All right, man, but I'm telling you, if something happened, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you know, bro. Listen, it's your fault because we could have had this, man. He right here, man. And listen, and so we know David went and cut a piece of his cloth off and he went back and showed him at some point, you know what I'm saying? When he came out the cave, like, yo, and that's when, because see, I love this because enemies in the dictionary mean anybody cause a hatred in your life. But one of the most powerful scriptures to me, which there are a lot, Proverbs 16 and 7, it says, when your ways please the Lord, God will make your enemies be at peace with you. So because, you know, we pray for our enemies, we do what we got to do. Imagine if we did that as a, as, a, as a nation, as the body of Christ, that we started praying for our enemies. And I know y'all be like, well, how can they be my enemy? And, I, and I'm in church with them because they can be temporary enemies. Why? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So watch this. Because David did that and, and David goes out of the cave and he says, Saul, Saul. And he like, yo. And then he said, look. I got this piece of, <laughs> I got your piece of, I got your piece of cloth. I could have killed you, but God told me not to touch you. And that's when it says Saul broke down and said, you are greater than I am. Man, how powerful would that be? Do we really want to see the kingdom? Do we really want to see the body of Christ live? Because a lot of times, a lot of people, let's just say Christians, fleshly led Christians, because there are two types, ones that are led by the spirit, ones that are led by the flesh. The fleshly led Christians are out of order and don't even know it. Why? Because it said the gifts and callings of God are given without repentance. So what that means is that you can be out of order and not know you out of order because the out of order machine does not know it's out of order. You ever put money in the out of order machine and they still try to produce goods? Why do they even leave it plugged up? Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. What is Holy Spirit speaking? So watch this. Imagine if we did that because God said, whatever you do in secret, I will reward you openly. So there's a lot of people that don't understand that they're in their flesh. That's why they'd be like, oh, well, how can they be doing this? Or how can they be racist and do this? Because the gifts and callings are given without repentance. God isn't going to take it back. Yeah, you called to be a pastor. Yet you out of order because watch this. The people wanted Saul. <laughs> Just like some of these leaders in our country. So, Saul was anointed by Prophet Samuel. 
from God. So watch this. But he was out of order because he was king for 40 years, but he was anointed for two years and he was out of order for 38 years. And and watch this. God don't remove the gift or the calling. He removes his precious anointing. So we have people that don't know what they're dealing with. Because, see, I don't put my mouth on people. I used to. And God checked me. And I said, God, I don't want to be whooped by you. I'd rather my mom whoop me. And she got me good when I was younger. So God said, my son, I have to honor my word. I'm bound by my word. And so I stopped putting my mouth on people. I just let, let people put their mouth on me. I've seen people almost die. Diseases, things that they don't want. They had no clue. And I can't even tell them, you know, because God told me not to. It's simple. But I stopped my mouth on people. And what I love about God is, is he is good. And and I tell people all the time, if, if it was so easy, we wouldn't need God. Like y'all give the devil so much credit. Like the enemy, I'm, I'm going to do a video on that one before I go. The enemy has to let you know where the attack is coming from. So then you know how to pray. <laughs> and on that note, as always, love y'all. God bless.